But first, let's give you the five big developments that have taken place on the demonetization efforts by the government. It's the eighth day since the Prime Minister announced the demonetization of high-value currency, replacing them with new and 2,000 and 500 rupee notes. Long queues still persist outside ATMs and bank branches. They continue amidst a series of measures introduced by the government to the woes of the arm army. Meanwhile, it's an all-out war between the opposition and the Modi government over demonetization on the streets at well, with West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee leading a protest march to Rashtrapati Bhavan, along with other opposition parties, including the BJP's ally, the Shiv Sena. The leader later met President Pranam Mukherjee and sought his intervention on the demonetization row. <laughs> जो आम जनता है उसको फंसा दिया वही अभी सफर कर रहा है अभी एक आदमी इवन दो टैक्स पेयर्स है उसको भी अभी क्यू में खड़ा होने पड़ता है उसका जो रुपया बैंक में जमा है वो भी नहीं हो रहा है हमने कहा पहले एटीएम का एक मीनिंग था कि ऑल टाइम मनी और अभी बोलता है एटीएम आएगा तो मिलेगा and after getting bail in the RSS defamation case, Rahul Gandhi replicated his photo op in Mumbai today. The Congress Vice President accusing the government of failing to implement the demonetization scheme. Listen in to Rahul. लोगों को तो बहुत मुसीबत हो रही है, बहुत मुश्किल हो रही है। ये बिना प्लानिंग की नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने ये काम किया है। और जो सच्चे ब्लैक मनी के लोग हैं, जो बड़े-बड़े लोग हैं, वो तो यहाँ पे लाइन में कोई नहीं दिखाई दे रहा है। जो आम आदमी है, उसको मुश्किल हो रही है। और सरकार से हम ये कहना चाहते हैं कि हर बैंक में आप कुछ ना कुछ सुविधा सुविधा की दीजिए पानी की सुविधा दीजिए महिलाओं के लिए स्पेशल लाइन लगाइए लोग ये काम करने का तरीका लोग आप Okay, so those are top five developments, but there is someone we thought today who can put it in some context to, for us. P. Chidambaram has been the finance minister of the country and delivered nine budgets. What does demonetization really mean to the political and economic future of the country? Why is the Congress opposing demonetization? Why has Mr. Chidambaram taken a very strong line against the Modi government on this issue? The financial implications as well as whether the Congress party ever did enough to take on black money. Let's listen in now to P. Chidambaram in this exclusive interview that I did with him earlier today. As the demonetization debate echoes within parliament and outside, Joining me now is a very special guest, the former finance minister and senior congress leader, P. Chidambaram. Appreciate your joining us, Mr. Chidambaram. My first and direct question to you is, is the Congress today guilty of political opportunism? A week ago, when the Prime Minister announced demonetization, your party spokesperson, Randeep Surjewala, welcomed the move, saying that you would welcome any move against black money. Today, the Congress party and Rahul Gandhi is calling it a scam. In one week, you've done a remarkable U-turn. Did we have full information on the day they announced the decision? Today, I reiterate, we are against anything which is opportunist and adventurous. But we fully support any decision of government that has three objectives. Put down counterfeit currency stop corruption, stamp out black money. Mm -hmm. If these objectives will be served, we will support the government. But if, as the decision unravels, and we see that there are serious questions about the decision and more questions about the manner of implementation of the decision, We'll certainly question that. Now, am I to understand then that you support demonetization as a principle, as one of the measures available to take on black money, but your problem now is with execution? No, I don't. I made it very clear. I support the objectives, but I don't support the method. I hope you read my statement of 
I did. 9th of November, where I started by saying I support the objectives, but the method is wrong. Demonetization in an economy where the cash economy is extremely large is not the answer. The last demonetization of 1978 was a total failure. The world has changed since 1978. And, you know, and, India is and, far more I'll tell you. capable of handling the fallout of demonetization in 2016 compared to 1978. Exactly so you can't compare opposite. 1978 to 2016. Exactly the opposite. Your conclusion is wrong. In 1978, the high denomination notes represented barely 2 or 3% of the currency in circulation. What has changed is 86% of the currency in circulation is high denomination notes. Therefore, the world has changed in a sense that it is more difficult to do de you know, demonetization. Let me give you an example of where I believe that, uh, you know, the, the strange speak, as I call it, of the Congress. Rahul Gandhi has said in a statement, the government had alerted BJP people of demonetization beforehand. He also says, I don't think even the finance minister knew about demonetization announcement. You know, and on one hand, you say that the government had alerted BJP people about the announcement. On the other hand, you say even the finance minister didn't know about it. Surely, such a major announcement could not take place without Mr. Arun Jaitley being taken into confidence. No, I, 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 don't, I, I don't believe that. Ordinarily, the finance minister should be in the loop. You're saying Arun Jaitley was not taken in I the loop. I didn't say that. You're putting words. I no, said ordinarily. You're saying that. You didn't allow me to okay, complete the ahead. sentence. Ordinarily, a finance minister should be in the loop. If a finance minister is in the loop, then the chief economic advisor should be in the loop because he is the principal economic advisor. The senior officers dealing with banking, economic affairs, mm -hmm. revenue should be in the loop. I'm pretty sure in my mind that the chief economic advisor was not consulted. This is your supposition. This is your speculation. We can, only, we can only speculate. Do we have information from the files? You show us all the files, how the files moved, we'll tell you. We can only speculate. What else can we do? Therefore, therefore, when Mr. Ra Rahul Gandhi was making a point that perhaps the finance minister was not in a loop, I'm sure he was being sarcastic. But I won't say that everybody in the finance ministry was in the loop. Can you imagine a decision of this kind where the senior officers of the finance ministry, particularly the chief economic advisor, is not in the loop? So the flip side is when you take a decision like this, you need utmost secrecy. I don't agree. Today the government is questioning again. the execution of the plan when the fact is you needed utmost secrecy, which agree. is why and ATMs had to be reconfigured no, no, at the last moment. No, no, I've heard you, but yes. I don't agree. Because this is not demonetization. What is demonetization? Demonetization means the currency is killed once and for all. This is simply an exchange of old notes for new. And they hope that some part of the old notes will not come back to the banking system and that can be destroyed. This is not demonetization, which is why no major economy in the world has demonetized its currency. What are you going to term this then? Will you allow me to complete? Yes. No major economy in the world has demonetized its currency in the last 40, 50 years, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. In fact, to my knowledge, the only two countries which announced demonetization in the strict sense were Libya under Mr. Gaddafi and Zimbabwe under uh, Robert Mugabe. Mr. Mugabe. Mm -hmm. Now, I think India joins Libya and Zimbabwe as an economy which announced demonetization well I've explained in my article this is not even demonetization in the strict sense so you started off with your objectives let's look at those objectives yes. already in the space of a week we are being told that three lakh crores have come into the banking system they will and come. in in the by December 30th this amount could double you could even have eight nine lakh crores into the banking system that liquidity could become a benefit to propel the economic engine forward. <laughs> Again, your fundamentals are totally wrong. If you impound 15 lakhs worth of currency mm -hmm. and then tell people you can't exchange it in a shop, you can't exchange it in a petrol bank, you can't exchange it in your mall, you can't give it to anyone, you'll have to come through the bank. Everybody has to go through the bank to exchange it. So today what would I do? 
I would take a thousand rupee note mm. or a five hundred rupee note, go to a drug store, buy medicines for two hundred rupees. He will give me the three hundred rupees. He is intermediating direct. He, there's no intermediation. He is changing the currency directly. But once you say nobody can receive it, I'll have to go to the bank to first change my five hundred into five hundred rupee notes and then go to the drug store. All of the 17 lakhs has to only go through the bank. So don't count it as a windfall. Once you say you, the, without the bank's intermediation, this currency is useless, everybody has to go through the bank. So you don't agree that this, because this is one of the advantages that the government believes of their demonetization move, is that it will bring liquidity no. into the system. Again, you got it wrong. What the government believes, I'll tell you. They have not spelt it out. What the government believes is, and there is an element of economic truth in it, if it turns out to be correct. If out of, say, 14 or 15 bill, uh, lakh Acron. crore high denomination notes, or if all of them were legal tender, mm -hmm. all of them were legitimate, believe me, all of them will go through the bank. Mm -hmm. The government hopes that some part will not come back to the bank. The part that does not come, to the, come back to the bank is obviously illegitimately earned income and that can be liquidated. That's and the government. So point. you believe that's only a fraction? You believe that's only I the don't fraction know. and you're saying therefore for the kind of pain which is being caused the gain is very limited. I don't that's know. your broad no, point. There, there is, there's more, more economics to it which I'll have to explain. You see I don't know how much will come back to the banking system mm -hmm. but at least Dr. Raghuram Rajan in a speech and answering questions said listen most of it will come back because there are many ways in which it can be brought back into the banking system. But to the extent that money does not come back to the bank, the RBI will extinguish that liability. But money is created by the RBI to meet the demand. Currency is printed to meet the demand for currency. Mm -hmm. People need currency to transact their business. Therefore, if the money in circulation is insufficient to sustain economic activity, RBI will print more currency. So ultimately after all this exercise, you find say after six months or eight months or nine months, we have got the new 2000 rupee note, the new 500 rupee note and perhaps the new 1000 rupee note altogether adding up to 15 or 16 lakh crore, this exercise is an exercise in futility. You and understand you, and you'll possibly have a new black economy which will emerge. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why you call it a black economy. It's really not a black economy. See, the real way to describe what they're doing is, what they're saying is, they're saying it without understanding how an economy works. They are not demonetizing currency. They are demonizing cash. <laughs> they are demonizing cash. Take, for example, the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy is... 21 trillion dollars 8.6 percent of that is cash economy 8.6 percent of uh, 21 trillion dollars is close to about um, I don't know 17 18 billion dollars mm -hmm. Chinese economy is second 12.7 trillion dollars and I'm sorry Chinese economy is um, uh, 14 trillion dollars mm -hmm. 12.7 percent is cash Japanese economy is about 4.5 trillion dollars, 11 percent is cash. Indian economy is only 2.25 trillion dollars and 22 percent is in cash. You cannot, the, the aim they are setting out that we will have a cashless economy is not only utopian, it is foolishly utopian. Do you agree though Mr. Chidambaram that over the years and the Congress has been in power for much of the last 70 years, there was a flourishing parallel economy in this country. You call um, parallel means untaxed, untaxed, taxable undeclared, income. Un, un, untaxed, undeclared taxable income. Ah, correct. That, you that, agree? That Various is, figures have been there over the years from 35% no, no, to 70% no, no, have been no, given. We we'll stick exactly. to your 22%. This is the World Bank's report. You accept 22%, 22% which is also a very high amount. It is high, but that in is those 70 years, the Congress did very little to control it. Now along comes the Narendra wrong Modi, again, wrong again, brings wrong. in shock treatment, and reach, you object to it. Don't reach conclusions. You should ask me what did we do. And I'm asking ask you, please tell me what you did I'll to actually you. bring down the numbers. I'll ask you what you did. Now the measures we took. 
The first one was in 1997, the VDIS. Mm -hmm. The VDIS unearthed 33,000 crore rupees of shadow economy, which in today's terms is worth about 88,000 crore, more than what they got under the income disclosure scheme. Mm -hmm. So number one, we started unearthing black money and making it, uh, giving an opportunity for people to bring it when you were finance marriage. minister in the United Front One. Network. Yes. Well, no, okay. I was a congressman. I was only TMC at that mm -hmm. time. Second, in the 2005 budget, I announced a scheme, and I say, to introduce special schemes to unearth black money and assets. I'm concerned about large cash transactions, especially withdrawals of cash when there's no ostensible purpose. I propose to levy a tax on the withdrawal of cash on a single day of over rupees 10,000. The Banking Cash Transaction Act was the first well thought out step to track the movement of black money. We created the FIU simultaneously, which will all banks will report to the FIU all transactions. Who opposed it? The BJP opposed it. So that is the second measure. The third was the section in the Income Tax Act. I concede it was Mr. Yashwan Sana who amended the act towards the end of 2003 or so. But then when I became finance minister, we notified that section, made the rules and introduced what is called AIR, third party reporting. Third party reporting brought in a large number of transactions to the notice of the CBDT and the CBDT started issuing notice. So don't say we did nothing. Without doing nothing, we could not have brought down we could not have brought down the total black money. The black money, in fact, shadow economy's estimate in the year 2000 was 23.1%. And in 2007, World Bank estimates it as 20.7%. So, these so are the, the point that Mr. Modi is making yeah. is that, the, that this is the first major shock treatment to the economy. You are making incremental changes. <laughs> He's is, taken a major decision. Nothing, you're wrong again. This is not... A short treatment to the economy. I was this with Surjit Bhalla, the economist, a little uh, while ago, and he says this is as big. This can become as big as 1991. That is his view. Particularly if it is followed up by other reforms, including direct tax reform. That is his Do you view. agree with that? I don't. That is his view. But everybody does not have to agree with Mr. Bhalla. For example, Mr. Bhalla uh, predicted that Hillary Clinton will win by 10 percentage points. Yes. So I think that is a view. Just as. Everybody does not have to agree with my view. I'm stating a view. There are other economists. Have you read uh, Samitra Chaudhary? So other economists have said, you see, what this has done is, under the guise of demonetization, they have put millions and millions of people into utter despair and misery by asking them to queue up to change their money. You know what, how many, what is happening today? There are two lakh bank branches. I assume 400 people queuing outside each bank branch. I went to Connaught's place mm -hmm. yesterday. Eight crore people are queuing up outside bank branches every day. Eight crore. Mm -hmm. ATMs. There are two lakh ATMs. They say one lakh 20,000 ATMs are functional. Let me accept that figure. 400 out of each eight, outside each ATM is another five crore people. 13 crore people are queuing up today to exchange their money. In Parliament House today, the serpentine queue uh, started from the post office, came right down, went up the first floor on the steps. Every Parliament uh, employee is standing outside the post office to change legitimate money. So I the Prime Minister is saying this is a temporary pay until December 30th. He's saying the Are you, system... Do you understand the first order effect you have seen? Mm -hmm. The second order effect will come now. There will be a second order effect. You saw the Tirupur is closing down. Surat is closing down. because Nobody has got money to pay wages. Farmers cannot buy fertilizer, cannot buy seeds because there is no cash. You see, somebody planted in the Prime Minister's head. And I don't blame him if he accepted it without... This is where you should consult. Somebody planted the idea that India can become a cashless society. Somebody should have told them, sir, no country in the world is a cashless society except perhaps 
uh, Iceland or somebody Sweden with 300,000 people or something I've given you given you the cash economy of the three largest economies in the world US China and um, uh, Japan runs into billions of dollars you cannot become a cashless society you, you can become a cashless society over a period of time but if an overnight you want everybody to switch to credit card and debit card let me ask you I, I belong to a village mm -hmm. there's a village weekly fair it goes Monday this village Tuesday that village Wednesday that village now on that weekly fair you buy vegetables you buy fruit you buy pots and pans you buy toys for your children that is the weekly fair where the surrounding villages bring their mm -hmm. uh, wares to that village now where is the credit card where is the debit card there how do I pay the carpenter how do I pay the uh, plumber how do I pay the uh, electrician um, how do I play the dobi I mean there's just no way the, the short term problem you're making into some kind of a long term it is. A, a, a Rajdi, crisis I'm asking what would you have done differently let's assume you were the I finance would, minister because there's some this. talk is it true that you also consider demonetization and we rejected it and what did we do instead Raghuram Rajan and I what did we do instead in January 2014 we announced all pre-2005 notes will be phased out mm -hmm. new series will replace it you please go and exchange your old series after March 31 the old series will not be legal tender that is the way and then to the extent that old series does not come back to the bank it is impounded and liquidated so that's what you would have done that is what we did not would have done and, and in this situation it? also Just you would moment. have done and who opposed it Meenakshi Lekhi spokesperson of BJP went on air and called it an anti-poor move if that was anti-poor what is this are you saying therefore if Raghuram Rajan was still RBI governor he would have not accepted this undoubtedly you're saying you're confident this is not I, speculation no, this I'm is not, based on your own experience of I January know, 2014 I know his views I mean he has not spoken yes and maybe he will not speak because he's far away now yes but I know from my experience he would not have agreed to demonetization because he has after a lecture there was a question answer session I think sometime in August 2015 where somebody put this question to him can we not demonetize high denomination currency explain why the gains are so small and the pain and the disruption will be so high that it is not a wise move so what would you have done given the fact that the that the commitment to eradicate black money now is shared by all political of parties course. you also said it's one of your stated objectives there's a commitment to get fake counterfeit notes out of the system many of which are supposed to fund terror no, you, no, your no, objectives no, are exactly, similar don't exaggerate How let's, let's, let's take them one by one NIA study estimates the counterfeit currency in circulation is 400 crore rupees in a currency circulation of 16 and a half lakh crore rupees can you even imagine the number of zeros and 16 and a half lakh mm -hmm. crore out of that 400 crore is counterfeit see if I can print a currency using modern technology mm -hmm. in two or three years you can print fake currency using the same technology after all it's one human versus another human so periodically once in four or five years we phase out old currency and allow the new currency to come in counterfeiting will take place the most counterfeited currency in the world is the US dollar be that as it may therefore we would have done exactly what we did in January 2014 phased out old currency introduced new currency that will put it won't end the fake currency it will at least slow down or lessen the volume of fake currency mm -hmm. that's what all countries in the world do so fake currency will be dealt with that way periodically introducing new currency notes facing out the old ones mm -hmm. that is what the way to fight black money is to look at the taxation system I reduced the direct taxes in 1997 from a high to the 10 20 30 mm -hmm. which has stood the test of time for the last 20 years no finance minister has tinkered with that rate that is the move mr. Modi intends perhaps according to the buzz to do exactly that in the January that budget if he if he can if he can balance his books and yet reduce direct tax rates I'll welcome it but then if he increases indirect taxes and reduces direct taxes that is completely regressive direct taxes are progressive taxes if you want to reduce it we will welcome it 
but not by increasing indirect taxes. What would your advice then to Prime Minister Modi then be? Oh, they didn't listen to us. On now, the, given the situation uh, that exists now, what ninth, would your advice what be? What did I say on the 9th of November? My statement was a balanced statement. I hope you have seen a copy of my statement. I have. I said, listen, the test of this decision will be how well you implement it with the least inconvenience and least disruption. Now, what should the Prime Minister have done? What should the Finance Minister have done? On the 9th, they should have called all parties and said, we have taken this decision. These are our objectives. We foresee difficulties in implementation. Please tell us. We swear all of you to confidentiality. This is a confidential meeting. Please tell us what steps should be taken to implement the decision. We would have come out with our suggestions, even post facto. According to me, they should have consulted more people before they took the decision. Not us. They should have consulted economists. But at least post facto, they should have. After 9th November, no opposition party has been consulted. All we get is galleys and abuses in every speech they make. What would you then do? Would you, for example, speeden up the entire process of getting the new 500 rupee notes into you the see, market? What do you believe the finance minister and the prime minister should do? See, they have blundered. They have blundered hopelessly. They are trying to race against time. I will tell you something. There were 1,570 crore worth notes of one denomination and 630 crore worth notes of another denomination, 500,000. Mm. Total was 2,100 crore notes. The capacity of the printing presses is 300 crore notes per month. If they want to replace 2,100 crore notes by equivalent denomination notes, it will take them seven months simply to print the notes. That is why they introduced the 2,000 rupees. There's absolutely no economic justification. Tell me, nobody has answered my question. When you are demonetizing, so-called demonetizing 500,000, why do you introduce 2,000? I'll tell you why they introduced 2,000. Only to save the number of notes they have to print. It will still take them five, six months to print the currency notes. And if you want to print 100 rupee notes, it will be five times the number you'll have to print. You see how unprepared they were. When, when you make these criticisms, Arun Jaitley says these are the criticisms of a columnist. I know. These are not a criticism of a former for, uh, finance minister. I agree. I agree. I'm a columnist. I'm a humble columnist. He's a distinguished blogger. So let him answer in his blog the, my questions. Okay, I'm are my questions irrelevant? I'm going to ask you therefore in conclusion. Since you said all parties should have been consulted and we are seeing what's now playing out in parliament. Mamata Banerjee, the Shiv Sena, Omar Abdullah and the Ahmadmi party are leading a march to the president. You've got the likes of Mulayam and Mayavati taking the high moral ground, both of whom have disproportionate assets cases. Against no, no, no. Them. I, I no, can't no. come but no, no. My point is that the government, these are the words of the government spokesperson, this is a coalition of the corrupt, that those many of whom have charges against them are taking the high moral ground on the issue of black money. The Congress, and they've cited 2G scam, they've cited coal scam. This is the party today which is telling us how we should handle black money. Is this political battle won? where unless you have credibility, you can't even argue against the government that today. Is why, that is why I refuse your invitation to give suggestions. If they were genuine, if they were genuinely concerned about the hardship they have caused, but on the 9th of November, they should have called an all-party meeting, or the day after, or the day after. But between 9th and today the 16th, for eight days, They've abused us, they've abused opposition parties. They have said people standing in line are the rich and the corrupt people. They've said that. Mm -hmm. The looters are standing in line. That is insulting the people of India, people who make hard-earned money. Now please tell me, there was a rally in Ghazipur. How was it paid for? There's a wedding of a BJP leading member, former minister in Bangalore. Ex-BJP member. Well, I don't know. He was a minister. Yes, the Reddy. Uh, and the ready wedding. And Mr. Yadurappa is attending that wedding. Now, who is paying for the wedding and how is that wedding paid for? Sir, but when, when you ask, or when the Congress yes, party asks these questions, they will turn around and so say 2D why, coal scam. So that the is problem why, is that, that, that is why this, this, the problem this, these, is today these, you, uh, the part, your party lacks the credibility <laughs> to corner they the don't government ask on black money. If you think that we lack credibility to offer any suggestions, don't ask us. You are asking for suggestions.
and yet you accuse us of lack of credibility you ask us suggestions and you abuse us therefore I'm assuming that you are putting yourself in the position of the BJP and asking this question to me but don't accuse us of lack of credibility and don't abuse us can I therefore end with the most serious accusation that was made today on the floor of the house suggesting that this entire decision of demonetizing had been leaked beforehand that deposits have increased dramatically from July to September and therefore there is a scam involved. Rahul Gandhi has used the word scam. No. You'll have done it without proof. Are you all asking basically for an inquiry no. and that this is an attempt to politicize the no. entire issue? Do you have hard don't, proof? Don't, don't is there hard proof? See, you, are, you are an independent questioner. Don't take sides. The evidence so far is of course thin evidence but there is evidence. You, might, you agree it's thin evidence. But there is evidence. The BJP that uh, statement from the bank has been published. Mm -hmm. I can show it to you. One crore was deposited barely hours before the decision. By the West Bengal unit. West Bengal. There is evidence. Yes. You may call it thin evidence. There is evidence. Number one. Dainik Jagran published a report. Gujarat Samachar published a report. A 2000 rupee note image was circulated on YouTube or mm -hmm. whatever. All this is evidence that some people had wind of demonetization. Some people knew that the 2000 rupee note will be circulated shortly. And some people, maybe it's a coincidence, maybe it is not, barely hours before the announcement deposit a crore of rupees. Therefore, I'm not saying, I'm not reaching any conclusion. If on the basis of evidence that is available, mm -hmm. and I think Mr. Anand Sharma mentioned... So should there be an inquiry? Mr. Should Anand, there be a parliament inquiry? That's Anand, what your party seems to be demanding. Mr. Anand Sharma placed his evidence before parliament, whatever evidence he could gather, whatever evidence is available yes. in the media, and said, listen, there has to be an inquiry into whether these are purely uh, coincidences or whether there was a leak. Now, I don't know, he spoke in Hindi, so I didn't follow every word of what he said. But if this evidence is worrying and disturbing. In fact, the government would be well advised to take us into confidence and say, what was the sequence of decision making? Given that, do you believe that, given all that you've said over the last half hour, do you believe that the government should be rolling back this decision? No, no, it can't Are be you done. calling for a rollback? It can't now? be done. You agree it, it can't, can't be done? done because once Therefore, you've got to cooperate with the government now. But they are abusing us. Even today, they abused us. The point is... Are you ready to cooperate with the government? Are they ready to stop abusing us? Are they ready to accept our suggestions or even consider our suggestions? You can't speak for the government. The point is, once you've broken the egg and tried to make an omelette, it turns out to be, it, it is not an omelette. It turns out to be something very different from an omelette. You can't create an egg again. They should have had some forethought into it. They should have thought this through. Two or three economists would have guided them through to the consequences of a decision the first order effect, the second order effect, the impact on money supply, the impact on demand, uh, the impact on if demand reduces, production will reduce, if production reduces, investment will be affected. They should have walked them through this line of thinking. You're now. saying walk them through, you're saying consult. The Prime Minister is turning around and saying, I am someone mm. who has the force of the Prime Minister's office to take the kind of bold, tough decisions mm. that the Congress in the decade they were in power under Dr. Manmohan Singh in dual centers of power was unable I'm to take. I'm glad we didn't take this decision in our tenure. If we had taken this decision in our tenure, and if 13 crore people were standing on the streets, imagine what the BJP would have done. So you believe this is politically disastrous? You, are, you believe not, that I'm this not. is both economically <laughs> and politically disastrous? After the US election and after Brexit, I'm making no political predictions. All I'm pointing out is, this was a badly conceived decision and terribly executed decision. The objectives are good. You should have placed before yourself menu of options direct taxes, like third party reporting, any other measure to bring in more information to the CBDT. TDS, you could have expanded the TDS system, 
There are various ways in which you could have tackled black money. Instead of that, you chose demonetization because it's very attractive. You can present it as a surgical strike. Now, everything in this country, every decision in this country, henceforth will be a surgical strike. And now you find yourself in a situation where people are cursing you standing in the queue. There are people who are cursing, but there are also people who are celebrating. They believe celebrating that hoarders what? and people who have stacked the money over the years Let's will finally be taught a lesson. Let's suspend our judgment for that. As I told you, if you are impounding 16 lakh crore, you never believed that all 16 lakh crore rupees could be extinguished. Nobody could have believed that. If after six months, eight months, nine months, money circulation comes back to the same level, if cash to GDP remains 12%, if money circulation comes back to 16, 17 lakh crore, this is an exercise in futility. Don't you agree with me? As you, said, said, think my, about these as you said, my role is purely of a neutral umpire. No, no, I'm, forget the I'm, Prime Minister even and umpire. his uh, even the Prime umpire. Minister and his advisors believe this is a surgical strike on the black money economy. That is the you problem. You believe the first surgical strike. The first so-called surgical strike, which was only cross LOC action, did not put an end to infiltration on the border. Right. On the contrary, it has triggered more infiltrations on the border. The second so-called surgical strike has driven millions and millions of people to stand for hours to exchange a pittance, 4,000 rupees and 4,500 rupees of their own legitimate money standing in a queue for four or five hours. Children have gone without milk for two days. People have gone without medicines. I know people have gone without meals for two meals before they could scramble some money. I had in my hand two 10 rupee notes and 13 1,000 rupee notes and I couldn't buy anything. I had to send it to the bank when the bank opened on their 10th or 11th or whatever. Therefore, please understand, don't get carried away by your own, uh, by our own uh, uh, puffery. Uh, the point is, you, you don't think that the corrupt of this country are running scared today? I don't know. I don't know. I've never kept cash more than say 20, 30,000 rupees. I draw money on the first of a month and I keep that cash. Mm -hmm. I don't know who keeps sacks of cash. You should ask somebody who seeks sacks of cash or you should ask builders, uh, jewelers, traders, you ask people, you various ask, uh, politicians. I don't get, know. Politicians I don't know. have kept, you know, political know. funding you works on cash. You should ask people who collect money for their party. In fact, you should ask, you should ask the treasurer of the BJP. <laughs> okay. As I should ask the treasurer of the Congress, oh, of because course. maybe the real crackdown on black money will be when we make political funding, Mr. Chidambaram, more transparent as well. No question. You could have thought about that as a measure, you could have thought about that, but why? Which you didn't think of when you all were in power no, all sorry, those years. Again, your facts are wrong. And I'm disappointed, Rajdeep, that you get your facts wrong. Political funding was thought of, uh, papers were prepared, election commission involved all political parties, there is no consensus. That's the problem, you but didn't even agree to put it under RTI. You can't question my facts, sir. The fact the is, you all only made papers, <laughs> you all didn't act. BJP is also not under the RTI. That is true. And BJP does not agree to come under the RTI. So don't point the finger only at the Congress. Let the BJP, it's in power today, find a consensus for political funding, state funding of election. I will say accept it. All right. We couldn't make parties agree on state funding of election. The Prime Minister has spoken about it yesterday. Let him in the remaining two years succeed in pushing through state funding of election, we'll welcome it. You don't agree that the Prime Minister, as is now aide say, has brought what he calls not just this one move, it's come on the back of several other moves of acting against Benami properties. <laughs> it's come against, he claims, making the entire process of resource allocation more transparent. It comes on the back of acting, he says, against those with Swiss bank accounts. It comes... Swiss with bank accounts were unearthed during our tenure. The list was obtained in our tenure and notices were issued in our tenure. You're saying that you actually were acting against them. It's not... Go to the, go to the files and ask for the dates when the notices... Okay, because the issued. government says they are the ones who proceeded against the defaulters. They are the ones why, who are... Why, are you, why, do you, why do you believe me or the government? Just go and file an RTI mm -hmm. to the CBDT and say, when were the first notices issued 
after the list of 700 odd people was obtained. Ask them, you will get the So I'm not going to even get you to give some credit to the Prime Minister that he is waging, as he calls it, a war on corruption. I don't believe that you can call anything as a war on corruption. Corruption can be fought only by laws, by identifying sectors which are prone to corruption, prone to shadow economy, and taking targeted measures that will less. For example, if somebody came to me and said, we will reduce stamp duty, something which we have recommended to the state governments. Stamp duty for registration of immovable property. That would be a step towards lessening the shadow economy. Which I'm told again the Prime Minister is planning to push. But that is a state along with st Along with BJP ah, state government. Good. Governments. We'll welcome that. The point is, don't ask us to welcome everything just because it is dressed up as a war. <laughs> I mean, point is, we must, we must first get rid of this war mongering with economy okay war mongering with economy. so we must get rid of the entire surgical strike <laughs> mentality yeah. is what you're saying as i said this is not demonetization of money this is demonization of cash when a very large number of people in this country are still dealing with a cash economy i think that's the one line i'm going to leave it with the government says it's demonetization you're calling it demonization. I've given you examples of every country has a cash economy. Let's leave it there. Big or small. We should try to reduce it over a period of time. But to call cash as black money and anyone dealing with cash as a looter or corrupt or a criminal, I think that's completely wrong. Mr. Chidambaram, thank you very much for joining us and giving us your perspective. Thanks thank very you. much. P. Chidambaram former finance minister. Maybe the prime minister may want to consult Mr. Chidamram in taking the next steps in this war on black money.